to show you in the shop so I figured let's go uh, on walkabout here and we'll walk around the shop and we'll go to where these things are instead of the same kind of boring setting so we'll cruise over there and take a look I got a new tool acquisition we'll take a look at and then a uh, uh, one more um, um, it was actually a viewer package that, uh, that showed up but I actually have it installed and I'm using it so we'll, uh, we'll take a look at that too so let's uh, let's go on walkabout here Okay, so the first one, um, you might have spotted these right away, are these Allen wrench holders. And uh, these come to us from uh, Design Shack, uh, Bill Sch Schnoblin. And uh, he has a uh, Ultimaker uh, 3D printer. And he made, uh, I, I put them away, he made some uh, earlier versions and <laughs> I couldn't quite figure out what they were for. I thought they were for drill bits, but then he, he corrected me and told me they were for, they were for Allen wrenches. So he made me a, so a new set, um, popped these up, and he actually populated them with Allen wrenches, which was really nice. Uh, on these are these uh, Bondus uh, kind of um, gold colored, uh, they're newer ones here. And these have a little, uh, a little notch so they fit over a, an edge. Now you can put them on the front of your toolbox, but then you can't open the drawers. So uh, this was a kind of a spot that was nearby some machines and uh, um, you know, kind of handy. So these are metric, these are inch here. Yeah, I got that right. And you actually uh, check it out. This is pretty cool. He put ox tools in it and, um, and he's got the logo. The logo's flipped over, but uh, it's still cool. And um, so that's for Mr. Bozo. You turn them over to read the logo and they all fall out. So <laughs> um, anyway, uh, this holds actually it holds metric and inch, but um, I prefer to segregate the sets myself. And uh, so I can look at them and go, yeah, those are inch and those are metric. And, uh, um, and I want to be able to get my hands on them uh, without having to uh, rearrange them and, uh, and um, you know, like the, the stupid Bondus holders that they come in. So uh, anyway, Bill, thank you very much. Those are, uh, those are cool. They snap right on and then I can just pull them out and, and do vice jobs or whatever. So, um, and you guys, if you, just if you see these on sale, uh, the Allen wrenches, just buy them and you just leave sets all over the shop because you're always looking for them uh, in the machine shop. So uh, pays to have uh, uh, a couple of sets of those. So hey, I got another thing to look at. Let's pop over to this bench over here. And uh, this was an eBay purchase and uh, we'll scope that out too. Okay, so here's, this is a, an eBay purchase here. And uh, who doesn't like a, a spiffy uh, instrument case? And uh, this is uh, this English company, Hilger Watts. And um, they were, I think, purchased by Taylor Hobson uh, at some point back in the 60s. Um, the box is Bakelite, um, we've got some polished or chrome plated screws in it here with some just nice little latches and I'll give you a little prelude to what's in here. So let's open this up and we'll take a look at it. And what we have here is we have a very very special level and uh, you guys know that I have a, uh, a, uh, a level fetish actually. <laughs> And uh, this one came to me all the way from England. I bought it on eBay, and uh, the seller was in England near. Uh, actually, was he near London? I don't remember. Um, anyway, uh, he uh, he shipped it to me, and actually, it wasn't that expensive uh, um, for the level and the shipping. It wasn't bad at all. Um, and then we'll show you the bottom here. So it's V groove, so you can put it on a shaft. And then I'll, I'll show you these features. We'll get in a little closer. Um, what's real? What's this is just a really nice case and it's a really nice instrument too. And you know, here's the, uh, the level of detail. They even have one of their tags um, underneath the level. And then this is chamois or suede or something for the level to sit on. And the smell coming off of this is just wonderful. It smells like, like instrument oil and Bakelite and leather. It's just if this was an aftershave, I'd probably use it. So uh, the smell that comes off of this. And then here's their, they were on, um, 
98 um, Street, uh, Pancras Way, London, England. And uh, Pancras? Pancras. Pancras Way, London, England. Um, and there's the box. So let's come in a little closer and uh, I'll show you how this thing works and uh, it's, it's very cool. Okay, so here's the here's the level. Actually, you know what? I should probably kind of move this over a little bit so you guys can really see this. Um, and this is a fairly sensitive level. This is not a super super sensitive level. So this is uh, one thousandth of an inch um, in ten inches. Uh, that's kind of the resolution of one of those divisions. So that's a tenth of a millimeter per meter. Um, yeah, that's what they got. Tenth of a millimeter per meter. What what makes this thing special is that it has a micrometer adjustment here on the side, so we can actually measure slopes with it, uh, small slopes up to roughly two degrees. Now each one of these divisions is one minute of angle, and a full turn is one degree of angle here, and has a little lock nut. Now interesting, I, I was playing around with this lock nut knob here when so when you when you lock the lock knob and then you release it, it moves. And I don't, I don't get it. Okay, I don't get it. Uh, I don't know if it's supposed to do that. It's just kind of peculiar. It doesn't move when I lock it, but when I unlock it, it does move. So uh, anyway, just kind of an oddity there. Um, I, part of me wants to take it apart because there's a little, there was a little. Uh, something on the inside here I think that uh, I wanted to get off but I probably will just leave well enough alone because it's in pretty good shape so um, so let's let's play with it here this is uh, let's set it up here uh, this, you know it's sitting on carpet okay so uh, this is a, a real valid test here but you can probably see that bubble creeping along there as I move this, and I just let go and let it settle. So the idea is I'm gonna I'm gonna center it up between those two large divisions. Hopefully you can see that. You know I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, all right, well maybe I'll get you in a little closer, but all right, so that's pretty close. And then we can read the the angle off of that so that is uh, up four minutes of angle okay so that's four minutes that would be five minutes uh, ten minutes so we're going up there and then this would be five minutes down ten minutes down etc anyway so uh, like I said I have a I have a problem with levels I love them and uh, and uh, I've been looking for one of these adjustable ones like this because um, you can actually read and read an angle with it, and you can calibrate this the same way by swapping ends with it, and it has a little adjustment uh, mechanism here. But I'm missing the um, uh, I'm missing the little spanner that goes in there, and then it has some instructions inside the case here about how to calibrate it and uh, and do all that. And probably hidden in here at some point was the uh, the little spanner wrench. I, I wish I wish we had smell o vision uh, that way you guys could uh, you could smell this thing because it's just it's just wonderful and uh, hard hard to describe. So any of you guys that actually come over and and, uh, and visit the shop sometime, I'll uh, I'll let you have a sniff. So <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. All right. So some of you uh, some of you guys spotted this in the background on uh, one of my previous videos. Um, so I've been experimenting with uh, some scraping. Um, I haven't done much scraping in my career, and um, usually, you know, this is kind of machine tool rebuilder territory. But I have a project that I want to scrape, which is at Pratt and Whitney level. So I figured I better get some uh, some arm time in and uh, and start uh, uh, getting that muscle memory developed. So uh, anyway, I've been playing around a little bit here. Uh, with some test blocks, Actually, this, one's a, this one's dirty here, and then um, this is an angle plate that I uh, had machined previously, um, and I don't remember if we inspected this on, on camera, uh, I don't remember if, or if I wrote this up in a blog article, I think I wrote this up in a blog article about squaring this all up on all its different sides, but I said, hey, you know, this, 
you know, it's just been sitting around. I said, let's let's scrape the hell out of that thing and uh, and do something with it. So anyway, I've been playing with that. And uh, now this is steel. This is steel here. This block here is one that uh, um, Adam sent me, and it's cast iron. It's Durabar. Anyway, I wanted to see the um, you know the difference in how cast iron scrapes versus uh, versus steel. So uh, anyway, just playing with that, just kind of sharing that with you guys and. Uh, uh, and I'm practicing so that, uh, that I can make a, uh, a good video for you on uh, re-scraping this uh, Pratt & Whitney level, which is really my end goal there is I want to I wanna do a nice job on that because it's just a beautiful... Actually, you know what? Let's just get it. So, so it's taken apart now, but this is this uh, Pratt & Whitney... Pratt and Whitney truss level um, for the shape. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, this one I got cheap. I got this for a hundred bucks, but the vial is in perfect condition. Um, um, but the bottom of it is not in perfect condition. So this is it's cast iron. It's well aged, let's just say. And uh, but this is just a beautiful scraping project. It's it's small. It's controllable. Um, and uh, you know we can do a nice job on that uh, and bring this level back into a good working condition so anyway that's kind of the goal the goal and then here's uh, some of the tools it's a scraper I bought on eBay um, Sandvik and this is a uh, carbide tip one and Sandvik actually sells inserts that are pre-ground uh, for that so I bought that and this is an I got this one too. This is an Anderson Brothers here with a brazed carbide blade. And, um, you know, part of the impetus of this is I, I got the, the little diamond grinder, which is perfect for, uh, for honing the hell out of these. This that's pretty sharp. Um, for honing the hell out of these blades. And, uh, and then here's a, a, is this a mound? What is this? Oh, no, this is an eclipse. I've had this one for quite a while here. Uh, but I tried them all. I wanted to try them all and um, and just kind of see how they uh, how they behave and work out the moves and my uh, my stones for uh, deburring and whatnot. And then uh, I bought some uh, some different spotting inks. Now these it didn't come from McMaster. I just have them in here to keep them to keep the grit off of them. Uh, these are water soluble uh, inks for doing the uh, for doing the spotting. And I got some blue over near the surface plate because you and there so the yellow the yellow highlights it so that you can see it better and then the blue shows up better uh, showing where you uh, where you need to scrape so anyway just a little update on that and uh, there will be more on that coming okay <clears throat> this last one we're actually going to do a little uh, do a little work here um, this is this VFD box for the autometric and we used this is for uh, Bill Lewis, by the way. He, uh, he and I talk online a little bit, and um, we were talking about rota brooches. And um, so we use this uh, this flavor of rota brooch to uh, make this hole for this plug here. But I was mentioning to him uh, about another little set here, and uh, this is the other little set here. And this is this is actually my beginning in um, in rota brooches. I've had this for years and years. Um, but I don't know the foreman at the time he came out to the shop and he handed these out to people and they're just absolutely wonderful and these are made by the Hoogan company and um, these have been replaced many many times here you know they get trashed um, um, although I don't know maybe some of those are original I don't know uh, the Arbor I believe is original anyway uh, I, I have to make a cut out here and for this little bezel, okay, and it's got a little step on the back. So we're going to make a rectangle or square opening there that that's going to sit in. So this sits down flush, and it'll be screwed from the back side, and then that's just kind of a decorative bezel for the VFD. Um, so what I want to do is, I was going to mill this, but uh, I said, yeah, screw that. So I'm just going to use a saber saw on it, and but I need a couple of good starting holes in that. And we're going to use that. Um, the little Hoogan Rota brooch set to do that. So let me get you in closer and then uh, let me get a drill going and uh, get an apron on and uh, we'll poke some holes with that. All right. 
so I think we're going to change the size here. Um, and I already loosened this up, so it's got a little uh, little washer on it that kind of helps you get the uh, um, the thing off. There's two washers, but I've never liked the uh, the other washer. This one's got flats on it, so you can get a hold of it with a tool. Um, so we're going to put that on there. And you notice uh, that I've got a couple of drill bits in there. Well, it's got an eighth inch pilot on it that uh, is spring loaded. And uh, so I throw a couple of pilot drills in there, and I've already, I've already pilot drilled the, the little bugger. Yeah. So I'm gonna run, oops, let's put this on drill. All right, yeah, let's run it into slow speed here. Um, these are a little more expensive than, uh, than drill bits. Um, let's see. You guys gonna be able to see that? Yeah. So we're just gonna whack a hole here. Okay. And um, there's a little slug that comes out. And now, if you try to drill that with a half-inch drill, it's kind of a, you know, drilling sheet metal can be uh, kind of uh, <laughs> exciting. Put it that way. Let's do another one. Anyway, these sets are, they're not particularly expensive. McMaster sells them. A uh, few people sell them. Okay. Get rid of that. Throw it over near the trash can. So now I can get my saber saw in there and I can Cut this way, cut this way, cut this way. And then I'll do a little filing and clean that out. But uh, it's a nice, it's a clean little hole. It works better than a hole saw. And uh, I think these will cut up to a quarter inch deep or, let's see. Yeah, about, so there's the depth of cut there. You can probably see it. Um, from there to there, that's the depth of cut. So that's about three eighths of an inch there on that one. Um, anyway, they work good. Uh, Bill, that, that's kind of for you. I had to make those holes anyway, so I figured I'd use that little set.